As we continue tonight our series on the Lord's Prayer, I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, and uh, we'll be reading the words of the Lord's Prayer again tonight, uh, starting in verse 9 there. Uh, And specifically this evening, we're going to be focusing on the petition about bread. Give us today our daily bread, which is in verse 11. Uh, So hopefully you had a chance to uh, be turning to Matthew 6 at this point. And uh, let's read together, starting uh, at verse 9 and reading through verse 13. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus says, This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we have been thinking about the Lord's Prayer the last uh, several weeks together, uh, we've said that it is worthwhile for us to spend uh, this kind of time uh, talking about prayer, and specifically the Lord's Prayer, uh, because it is a central part of our lives as God's people. It's not something that's optional or, oh, you know, it's good for some Christians, but not for others. This is central. It's a huge part of who we are because it allows us in a unique and powerful way to connect with our Creator, our Savior, our God. And uh, Jesus, of course, opens the way for that. He also shows it in his own ministry and life, and we've noted that, how central prayer is in Jesus' ministry as he is choosing disciples, as he is uh, thinking about the cross, all of it. Jesus is in prayer again and again. So prayer is a vital part of the life of any Christian and our faith and our connection with God and and seeing our needs met in Him. If we're going to love God more and love our neighbors as ourselves, prayer is a part of it. And today we want to especially talk about this, we call the fourth petition of the prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And so we've talked about uh, hallowing God's name. We've talked about His kingdom coming, His will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And today we switch to uh, what's often called uh, the second table of the Lord's Prayer. The first three commands uh, specifically do with our vertical relationship with the Lord. These last three uh, petitions have to do with our relationship to each other and our human needs. As we come to this this petition today about bread, there's a couple things we want us to see. One is, first, that God cares about our physical needs. He certainly cares about our our spiritual lives, our hearts, and our faith and following of Him. Those first three petitions of the prayer point to that. But God also cares about our physical lives. He cares for us, body, soul, spirit, and mind, for all of who we are. And in these petitions we see, especially in this one, how God cares about our physical lives and our physical needs. And He cares not just about our own, as we'll see, but all those around us. So God does care about our physical needs. It's fitting for us to pray about them and for these needs to be met by God. But as we're doing so, this request reminds us that we're not just praying about what is ours, but instead about what belongs to to all, what is belonging to yours. So God cares about our physical needs too, but it's not just about what's mine, but about what's yours too. This isn't just a, a personal prayer, just For me, in fact, you see in these petitions that come, there's no I or me, it's us, our, we, all those plurals. It's never just this personal thing where God meet my needs. No, for for my neighbor too, as we'll see. So God cares for our physical needs, but it's more than just me. It's more than just me and my own. It's even more than just the church. We're praying for our neighbors at large around us as well. So let's dive into this petition. Give us this day our daily bread. I first just want to talk about that word bread and just the basic piece of what we're asking for here. So it's easy to kind of dive into spiritual things or to be going larger in the picture of what this petition gets into. But let's not forget, first and foremost, this is a prayer having to do with food and this most basic of physical needs. Right? Bread, of course, would be a staple food as as Jesus is delivering this message in the Middle East. And really points to just food that is needed for the nourishment, the sustaining of our bodies as human beings. And so first and foremost, we we should think of that as we ask God to provide our daily bread. 
that this is a petition, a request for that most basic of needs. God, give us food to eat so that we can live and be strong day after day. And again, thinking of that on a wide level, right? It's, it's speaking into hunger and it's speaking into just the stress that comes if we don't have our food and how that changes. I mean, think about even if you're hungry, how that can change your personality, uh, some things you might say or do because of that need not being met. And so this is a big piece, and it's first and foremost about that. Going from there, uh, it says, too, that it's bread, not cake. Right? You probably have maybe heard that before in this request. Bread, not cake. In other words, this is about what we need. We're asking God for the basic things that we need to live. We're not asking him for things we'd want. Oh, boy, we'd really like it if we had some yummy desserts, if we had, you know, you know steak, you know, uh, filet mignon. Or... We might want those things. But as we're coming before God, we're asking him for what we need. Uh, we, God, we need food to live. We need our daily bread, and we need that from you. So again, this is a reminder, and Jesus reminds us here in the prayer. As we're coming before God, he, he promises to provide us with what we need. And there might be other things we want. Uh, certainly in our culture, we look around us, we're always comparing. But this is a prayer for what we need as God's people. And then, too, you can start thinking about how this goes out when we hear about bread. So certainly we already started doing that. It's not just bread, but, but food. But Martin Luther, a famous Reformed theologian, uh, in his treating of the Lord's Prayer and his writings on it, sees how this goes toward a prayer for God's providing of of all of uh, what we need for life and preserving of life. And so he points to things like a family structure. He points to things like work, having work and economics. He points to good government, uh, the system set up to support getting what we need for life in our lives and thanking God for that and praying for that to God, that he provide that. All right, so you can see how this can go, go wider. And I think as we're praying uh, about our bread, our daily bread, we certainly can have that in mind, how God needs to provide all these things, right? uh, whether it's the weather or whether it's uh, the work we might have, uh, the finances, the, the systems, the structures. It's all needed and uh, really needed to go well to be providing for humanity day after day what we need for our lives. So we pray for bread. I wanted to note too, as we said in the opening, that this is a prayer for our bread. Give us today our daily bread. And that word should stick out and remind us that this isn't just a prayer for me or even just me and those close to me, but for me and my neighbor, praying for their well-being, for their provision by God as well. Again, think about Jesus' command to, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, but also to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that's reflected here. And really, Jesus' ministry is being reflected. His gospel, his good news, what he's doing and preaching about the kingdom of God. Certainly he is nourishing people's spiritual needs, their, their hearts, speaking to them about God's kingdom and about God's ways and what he's doing. But he's also, of course, in his ministry, administering to their physical needs, healing, uh, touching, just bringing this about, feeding as we see in the miracle, the feeding of the 5,000 or the 4,000. So Jesus is having this full-orbed ministry for the whole person, as it were. And we're called, as followers of Jesus, to have that as well. So certainly, we are called to, to be pointing people to God and to be caring for who they are spiritually. And this connection with Jesus, who we believe is the one who can give you true life and, and give you that nourishment you need. But we also tend to people's physical needs. And all throughout the, the history, the mission of the church, we've seen that. Uh, you could think of just our hospital. We take these for granted. This really hasn't been around all that long, that kind of system in our world. And so much of that was started by Christians who saw this need to take care of the physical needs of our neighbors, right? not just ourselves, but our communities. And so we follow the example of Jesus as he calls us to pray, to be asking God to provide not just for spiritual but physical needs. And we think of that not just for ourselves, but for our neighbors. As we think about this prayer and as we're praying it, I know most of us, you're probably listening today, uh, live in the United States or certainly probably in the Western world. And for most of us, we haven't had to wonder often, if ever, about bread for today. We typically know 
where our next meal is coming from. We have food in our kitchens. We have uh, money to buy things from the restaurant or the store. But we also know there's many around the world who don't live that way, who are wondering where their next meal is coming from, who don't know if they'll get it, who even are, are, are in poor health because they are starving or maybe even are dying from starvation. We are called, really, as Christians to have that, all of it, in mind as we are praying this prayer. It's not, again, just this tunnel vision about my life and my experience, but it's to be having the big picture in mind. So as we pray this, we should pray with gratitude. If you're someone like me, who you can see God has been providing, and I've had meals, and I haven't had to worry about having enough food for my life, you should be thankful every day, because I believe God is the one who provides that and gives the means and the structures and abilities for all that to happen in my life. We should have more, probably, gratitude than we express. It's a good practice to pray before our meals, but just reminding ourselves, you know, we don't deserve this. God gives it to us out of his grace and out of his mercy. And again, the, we talked about perspective this past Sunday. That perspective of, you know, God gives me what I need. And going back to that needs, want thing, where we so often look, we have that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses, and we often think, boy, I wish I had that. I wish, you know, I could eat a steak dinner whenever I wanted, or I could have these things or that, or have these kind of physical needs met that way. To have the perspective of, you know, all this is a gift from God. And every day I can see him meeting my needs and caring for my physical part of who I am, and to have that gratitude. I think as well as we pray this, we should also have lament or uh, sadness or maybe even maybe even a little bit of pang of guilt in our hearts especially as one like myself who lives in the western world with so much because as i said there's many we know even if we don't know someone individually who live around the world without plenty wondering where their next meal will come from or if they will even get it and sometimes i know as christians uh, we struggle especially in our part of the world we wonder you know we pray this and God says he will provide for our physical needs, and yet there's so many people who are hungry. What's going on? Is, is God slow in fulfilling that promise? What's happening? Well, I know I just can express for myself, as I've wrestled with that and talked with others about it and really looked at things, I've come to really have a lament and just kind of a, well, it's a heaviness, honestly, that comes over my heart as I think about this. Because as I've come to look and see and seen reports about food, what's clear to me is that there is enough food. There is enough to care for the physical needs of all of us as humanity around the world. There's enough of that to go around. And yet we know that many don't have enough or don't have enough to be healthy. But as I look at that, I realize that's not, it's not a God problem. That he's not providing enough. It's there. That's a me problem. That's an us problem. That's a sharing issue we have. God provides enough food for what we need physically, but we have trouble sharing it. We tend to hoard. We tend to keep for ourselves. I mean, let's be honest. Look what's going on in the last couple of months. You know, we have this uh, the shutdown and, and the isolation. What happens? Oh, there's no toilet paper. There's no of this or that. There's going to be a meat shortage. And better believe that a lot of us are stocking up. we got piles and piles. And there's others who have nothing. Right? This sharing is what we struggle with. We're called to be good stewards of everything God gives to us, including these kinds of resources that we need for physical life. So as we pray this, we should be thankful for what we have, but also lamenting our, our struggles and our systems and as individuals with sharing this in a way where all could receive from what God is giving to us. It's our daily bread, not just mine. And then I just want to focus a bit on that, that other word, give us today our daily bread. And I think, what, what's the big deal? That seems like a pretty obvious word, but... In the Greek, this word is unique. In fact, it's the only time we ever know or ever have known that it's been used in this passage, talking about the Lord's Prayer, this word daily. It's never used before, and the only time we see it used after is when people are talking about this verse. So it's hard to know exactly uh, what is being meant here. And what I have up here is some of the ways that people have translated uh, over the years in Scripture and as they've talked about it in the church. Right, so on one hand, it could be a time thing, and that's probably the most familiar to us. Daily meaning, give us our bread for today. God, provide what we need for our life this day. But often in the church, it's often been thought of by time, but as tomorrow. 
Give us our bread for tomorrow, thinking of the next day. Now, scripturally, you can connect this with the story of the Israelites in the wilderness when God was providing the manna, if you remember that, and how they would go to bed and just have to trust the next day God would provide. And so there's that connection, and often Christians have prayed it that way. Give us our bread for tomorrow. And even spiritually, this has often been connected then, from that lens, with uh, the Lord's Supper and the bread of communion. Uh, God provide that nourishment we need day after day, season after season. Give us what we need for tomorrow as we look toward the return of Christ. But often this has often or been translated as an amount of bread as well, and kind of for subsistence. Uh, give us just what we need to live, to survive. Right? Give us that amount. Or with a little more flexibility, give us more of what we, we need. In other words, don't just give me a slice of bread for my family. Get, give us a loaf of bread so we don't have to worry uh, and be in fear that the bread's going to run out. We can have freedom from that. It's hard to know exactly, and of course these are pretty close together, but come across one thought on this one I, I think is helpful. This is from Ken Bailey, who is a, a scholar, a biblical scholar and pastor who's served in the Middle East as a missionary for many, many years, and so has access to a lot of the culture there and uh, some of the writings. And he pointed back to one of the old Syriac translations of the of the old, scriptures of the New Testament and talked about how they uh, translated this and how they translated it is give us the bread that won't run out. In other words, just give us enough. It talks about how this would fear us or excuse me, free us from the fear of not having enough. And we know how that could be a worry. Are we going to get by? And it kind of encompasses all these definitions about having what we need for today, having what we need for tomorrow, having enough to live, but having enough also to be, to be without stress or without fear in our lives. God provide what we need to have enough to meet our physical needs day after day. Meet, give us today our daily bread. And just as we're saying that, the reminder that this is a prayer of dependence, complete dependence on God. I know that we have abilities jobs, intelligence, bank accounts, all those things. We can make a lot of food, right? We can grow crops. We can do all that. But the acknowledgement here as we come before the Lord in prayer is that none of that happens without him. We are completely dependent on God for our lives in every aspect, including our physical lives. And that's true of all humanity, whether we acknowledge it or not. So we're saying to God, give us today our daily bread because we depend on you to give us what we need to live. Without you, we can't. If we cut ourselves off from you, it's like cutting off the, the branch of the tree that we're sitting on. We're going to fall. That'll be it. We depend on you, God. And God promises that he provides. He meets those needs. He's willing and able to do so. As we think about this petition, give us this day our daily bread, we can look to Jesus and see in his ministry how he points to God's willingness and ability to answer this prayer. So think, of course, of Jesus' feedings. I think that's the first thing that comes to mind and how Jesus fed the 5,000, the 4,000. It shows that God cares about our physical needs. He cares about that part of who we are and he is willing and able to provide. Uh, even when we think the resources are scant, they're not there, God has the power and the will to give us what we need. And just to be reminded of that in Jesus' ministry to see how he does that. I think we see it as well in, in other places, right? Jesus, uh, sometimes when he has these encounters with people who are ill in their physical bodies, they can't walk, they can't see, he addresses both sides of this equation. He'll talk about their sins being forgiven on the one hand, but he'll also heal their disease, their, their disability, whatever it is, on the other hand. God cares about both sides of this. He has power and he has the will to, to speak into that. We see that. In Jesus' ministry, we see that in the fact that we believe there is a resurrection of the body as Jesus experienced, so we will too. It's not just our souls, right? Our hearts in some way, something like that goes to heaven to be with God. No, we will be raised bodily because God cares about who we are, body, soul, spirit, and mind. And we see that in Jesus' ministry. We also see in Jesus' ministry how this points us to the full picture. Because Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Right? If anyone's hungry, come to me. You'll never be hungry again when you eat of me, is how Jesus puts it. 
He's the bread of life. And so we see in his ministry, in who he is, that he is the one in whom all our needs are met. Not just physical. Jesus isn't just a physical guru that we can come to to have those needs met. He's not just the one who can meet our spiritual needs or mental or, you know, like the, the gods had different things or different gods for different pieces in the cultures around. Right? We have the God of rain. We have the God of fertility. Jesus meets it all. He meets it all, friends. Every single need we have, he's the bread of life. He's the living water. All of our needs, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, are met in Jesus Christ. And he does this by coming down from heaven, seeing us in our needs, coming into the midst of that need, experiencing some of that himself. He knows what it is to be hungry, to be thirsty. He knows what it is to deal with that. And so he sees us and he meets us in our needs. And he does it all by going to the cross, taking upon himself our sin, taking it off of us to forgive us. And in his resurrection to assure us that the things that keep us from God and keep us from not only a relationship with him, but the provision for life that we need has been removed and defeated. And now we can pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can pray and trust that God will provide. We can pray that God will continue to work in us through his spirit that we might live a new way, not just caring about ourselves, but caring about our neighbors too and speaking to them the good news of how Jesus has come to provide for all our needs. So yes, friends, God cares for our physical needs as well. He cares about those things. He cares about your body. He cares about your nourishment, your life day after day. But he cares about your neighbors as well. He cares about all of humanity because he's made us all in his image. And as God pours out the rain on the righteous, the unrighteous alike, so he gives food. He gives provision to all of humanity as he cares for the sparrow, for the lilies of the field, for the beasts, the fish. So he provides and cares for us. And he asks us and calls on us to call on him to provide for our needs to give us what we need day after day, to be provided for, to have life, and in Jesus Christ, to know life abundant with him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you for being a provider God. We thank you for pouring out of your abundant resources, abundantly upon us. We thank you, Lord, that for many of us, we don't give too much thought day to day of how things will be provided for our physical lives. But Lord, we honestly reflect and lament that there's many, maybe even closer to us than we know, that, that don't have that reality. We pray, Lord, that as we lift this prayer before you, that we would be mindful of those fellow human beings around us and around the world. And Lord, mindful of the ways you're calling us to share, Mindful of the ways we can call for, for better systems of justice in our world. And just a better way of sharing with one another the resources that you give to us out of your grace and mercy so that we can live. And help us, Father, as well, to be pointing to the bread of life, to your Son, Jesus Christ, and the word of life, Lord, that you give through him. And so to be showing the world through our lives and through your word how life comes in every area through Jesus Christ. And we pray it in his name. Amen. Let's continue our worship together in song.